actually I don't really have a nickname, but maybe some, sometimes my parents will just call me Ham, H E M. Yeah. Hi, my name is Tommy. Uh, my nickname evolved around the time, <laughs> across the time. Nothing so much, I mean, like carry over until all the years. So I have red. I have uh, red, uh, red, 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 Okay, uh, actually it's quite similar to Devi because my first name is Maria so when I go to, came to Singapore they call me Maria uh, but actually my nickname is Vina but when I'm at home my mom will call me Ndut Ndut is Yeah because I, I, most of the time I always fat from ever since I was young I'm healthy not fat okay? <laughs> yeah then uh, yeah, I think different group will call me differently. My junior in NTU they call me auntie. Oh yeah, some call me girl grandma. Oh no. Yeah, but you can call me Vina. That's the, the nickname given by my parents. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Agatha. Um some people couldn't pronounce my name so called Jakarta. <laughs> So my name is Kevin. Yeah, one of my nickname is her nickname, Vina. Vina. To be similar or some other else uh, call me Adit because my second name is Aditya. Yeah, so that is. Leo. Leo. Very well. My name is Irene. Uh, my mother called me Irene. Somehow she like made me with with but she can call me Irene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and my uni, uh, if I introduce my name as Irene, they will automatically assume my, my spelling as I R E N E, but it's actually A I R Y M. So they call me M to make the women. But I have it. <laughs> Thank you. So my WhatsApp name everything I have right now. <laughs> Okay, my name is Ben. Uh, I think they all call me Uncle Ben. Papa, I started even in the university because uh, what happened is that most of the people are much shorter. <laughs> so it feels like I'm taking a, uh, like my niece or daughter <laughs> or son or children. So those those are the times. Yeah. So things have not changed. So so people are still around the same height. So, <laughs> but yeah, so some and it was around it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we went first round is nicknames. Okay. Now second round is what is the meaning of your real name? Can be name or baptism name. Okay. What is the meaning? <laughs> if, if you know, if you don't know, then okay. <laughs> or or maybe if not, then it's what. Or why the, uh, your parents gave you the name? So what's the significance of the name? Like, whether by meaning or by choosing that name for you? Okay, you know. Okay. So like my name is Nicholas. Actually, the the meaning of Nicholas is victory. Right, yeah. And of course, it's also named after Saint Nicholas huh, at the cross. <laughs> so it's supposed to be very famous. So I hope I. So Saint Nicholas. Yeah. And not speak or the name by itself is quite big. Okay. Give me up, yeah. Uh, you know, usually also if you have a meaning behind it, it's not a person. So, actually, I got this question when I was still secondary like, from my school. Uh, I don't have any meaning from Rasa. <laughs> then when I asked my parents, they said because uh, they want to name me Rhea, but <laughs> it's too common, they say, so they name me Rasa. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, from what I know, like my baptism name, baptism name is Diesel, so Such is like a 
you know, same name, my second name is my surname already. So I'm just going to share uh, exactly what's the meaning behind it. Is, this, is it just because of the king or is it something that they want to find something in English that is similar to my Chinese name? So I think it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. My name is Tommy Jeremiah, Kangra is the surname. Uh, Tommy is because my father during that time likes the singer Tommy Page. Uh, shoulder to cry on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, I think just because he, I mean, that's a popular song and he, he, likes, the, he likes the singer. Lah. So, uh, Jeremiah, because my mother chose just to in a sense to make it sounds nicer but I think I always associate with uh, Prophet Jeremiah as the weeping prophet <laughs> <laughs> that's why uh, my life always weep <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so negative, okay, that's all <laughs> okay, I uh, my name Maria Alpina Wijaya Wijaya is a surname uh, from Ui uh, Elvina, actually I'm not sure why my mom gave me the name Elvina Most probably because got one singer named Dina <laughs> Yeah, yes uh, But Maria, uh, I guess, yeah because of the mother Mary But actually I try to, last time I try to google the name Maria, you know what does it mean? Bitter Yes, bitter Maybe because of that, mother Mary must be very faithful because the life is so bitter like all the way. <laughs> yeah but praise god despite of the bitterness there is still the faith <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah so that's it mm -hmm. uh, my name is my son is wong so chinese is nan yan so nan yan is actually um by the fortune teller Somehow, so um, but I did manage to ask my dad um, what's the meaning behind. So, but when I read it um, to my Chinese friend, so they will say, is it by a flower name? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Agatha, I believe should be Agatha. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So for me, actually, Leonardo's cafe Aditya. Aditya, I think I don't know because uh, remember I asked uh, my parents about the real meaning. So uh, sometimes I just guessing about that. Aditya, I don't know really. But Kevin, I think because on that year on nineteen ninety three, many peoples of boys are named Kevin. Also, <laughs> maybe it's popular because the actor Kevin Costner. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> yeah, so many people. Even in my batch, so many people are named Kevin. Also. And, I uh, think that's also possible. Yeah, but for the Leonard this one, yeah, I think because I'm born in August, so the zodiac is Leo, then become Leonard. <laughs> yeah, that's what I guess. Uh, my mother is Salitya. So for her children, she names them after the smart smart children. So I think my name comes from I don't know if the is the exact same pronunciation or spelling, but yeah. Probably that's what my mom say. So uh, my name is actually uh, my name by my certificate is only Irene, no surname, no nothing. <laughs> so my my full name is like Irene Irene. <laughs> but actually, uh, my baptism name is Divina. Uh, she's actually like the same for a protector for escapee, protector for escape. They're protected from ice skating. <laughs>
interesting how the nicknames is so easy, right? But ask you, hey, what's your nickname, man? It's so familiar because most of the time people keep calling you by your nicknames. But when you ask, what's your real name's meaning? What's the... You know, some, some, a lot of us struggle. Some of us don't even know, or even if we know the deeper meaning, it's hardly ever brought to consciousness. Like right? all these beautiful meanings behind the names, or no saints, prophet, no blesser, that we hardly ever use it or even remember. Right? So keep that thought in mind. Okay, I'll we'll come back to that. But I just want you to notice the difference first. Okay? Okay. Alright. So I'm gonna open up the word. Alright. Uh, so I'll be using Mark's gospel, chapter eight. Should be a familiar uh, uh, passage. Right? So Mark chapter eight, verse twenty-seven to twenty-five. So Jesus set out with his disciples for the villages around Caesarea Philippi. Now on the way, he asked them, "Who do people say I am?" And they told him, "Some say you are John the Baptist; others say you are Elijah." Or one of the prophets. Then Jesus asked them, But you, who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah. So why I chose this passage, um, although the two questions that I want to highlight, right? One, Jesus asked, Who do people say I am? The second question he asked, Who do you say I am? Right? And often preachers will talk about you know, what people say and what Jesus say. But I want to use these two questions not for Jesus, but for ourselves. Okay, so I'm going to ask, I want us to ask these two questions. Who do people say I am? Okay, so ask yourself this, who do people say I am? So the next question is directed to Jesus. Who do you say I am? Okay. Get the difference? And yet, out of these two questions, which question do we ask more or seem to pay more attention to? Who do people say I am? Who do, who do others say I am? Right? That's the question we normally ask. We want to know if that guy, like me, or the person like my talk, or who, what, what, do you, what do they say about me? Right? Or we, when we hear people talk about us behind our backs, mm-hmm. we get a bit sensitive. <laughs> Doesn't say about this about me. So, so we care so much about what other people say about me, right? And and so just like even the nicknames, right? So all of us, so sometimes the nicknames is it chosen by ourselves? Usually no, it's what others say of me, right? Mm-hmm. And it becomes such habitual. People keep saying, oh, you know, that we start to accept it. But you like it or not? <laughs> uh, but we don't dare to say we accepted it. What people say we are, accept. But inside, we don't quite like it. Hey, I've got a name, I've got a very beautiful name, but why do you keep calling me this name? Bad. <laughs> <laughs> but not only do we pay attention to what others say we are, do you also pay attention to what you say of yourself? So the others, right? What others say of me includes myself. What do I say about myself? How often have we criticized ourselves? How often have we said, "Why oh, you're very stupid, I think. Why are you do such a bad thing? Right? Or can't you be smarter than me? So we all have a lot of thoughts in our minds also, calling ourselves names, putting ourselves down, being very, very harsh. And we listen to those things about ourselves. We pay attention to what we say about ourselves. And yet, if you look at Jesus' second question, then it's a question that I want to offer to you to start asking more. Apart from listening to what others say we are, apart from listening to what I say about myself, how often have we asked Jesus or asked God, who do you say I am? Who am I really to you? How do you see me? And that's the question I want us to start thinking about because I think even the, with the names that you were given, whether it was your parents' name, whether it's because they like singing or that thing. Right? But especially our baptism names, especially our confirmation names, they are names named after saints. Okay? 
either very remarkable life stories or by the name itself as such a beautiful hidden name, right? That is so hidden that sometimes we are not even aware of. That's so hidden that sometimes we don't even be conscious of. And yet, there is so much value and, and depth in that name. And not only in that name, in who you are. And there's so much hidden goodness, truth, beauty in you that we tend not to pay attention to. Because we are so distracted by what others say we are, we are so distracted by what I say about myself, that we forget about who God says we are. Who did He make us to be? And how valuable are we deep down inside? So, just like how just now, you know, we ask you know, between the nickname and, and, and your real name, the nickname is so much in you, out in the consciousness, out in the open. But what's hidden is the real meaning behind our true names. In the same way how we are so caught up with what people say we are and what I say about myself, so much in the consciousness that we start to even think and believe that's real. Maybe I'm really fat, maybe I'm the woman who weep all my life, maybe I'm going to suffer, you know? But maybe there's a deeper truth that we fail to pay attention to. Maybe there's a deeper goodness that we didn't even realize, right? And that's really what we want to do today. Okay. Um, so a bit about my background. Um, so I have one younger brother, right? And my dad, my mom, right? So I grew up and my dad very loving in a sense that he, 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 he works hard for the family, he provides food for the table, sometimes when he comes back home after work, he buys little goodies and supper and that kind of thing. He fetch me from school here and there, uh, teach, help me in my homework, help me to pray, teach me how to pray and all that, right? So on the surface, or on the say surface, overall he's quite a loving father. The other way that he shows his love is through his cane. <laughs> So he's very strict also, he's a lot of, you know, he's very, yeah, he used to kid a lot of me, right? and that's his way of loving me, right? And so, uh, he's, so every time my mom, you know, when I do something wrong, my mom keeps saying, ah, you come, yeah, my daddy come back home, I'm going to tell him, you know, and she'll go get beating or something, right? And there was one incident where uh, I was supposed to be studying for exams, I was in primary school, maybe eight, nine years old. Right, I was in my room, so I was studying, then halfway through, I like, okay, I, need, I want to take a break. So I take my comic book, open, read, read, then my daddy walked in. And my dad said, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm taking a break. And then he said, what nonsense, you're supposed to be studying, the exams is coming up. He grabbed the comic book, he ripped it in half, and he said, go and study. <laughs> so, yeah. right. And I didn't know how hurt I was. Over the years, I knew I still had that memory, but I thought, okay, yeah, my dad was quite, you know, rash, and he has actually uh, mellowed over the years. He's become more gentle, he's not as hard hot ever uh, now, right? But I always thought, okay, yeah, that was a very bad incident, I don't know why I keep remembering that incident. But, that's, but that stuck with me, right? And, and honestly, um, all these incidents I didn't know had such a deep impact on my deeper self. So, um, I went through, so in the last few months, I was in Sydney and I went through a bit of therapy, right? And a lot of uh, working through with my therapist and uh, talking about my life and my, my background. And there's one thing she, she shared with me which, which really was true. She said, kids, right, when we're young, we are very keen observers. We are very sensitive to what we see and what we hear, right? how our parents act, what they say, we are very sensitive to it. So kids are keen observers, but kids are also very poor interpreters. Right? What they see, they can interpret it in a very wrong way. So although now as a adult, I can see my dad's discipline or that is out of love for me. But as a child, I see his actions of killing me, I hear his words of you no know, repeating or that kind of thing. I as a child interpret it as I'm not good enough. That's why my dad keep punishing me. That's why I have you know, that's why I have to keep being punished. Right? He don't even trust me in you know, studying. I must be very lousy. Right? So I didn't realize that my deeper self kept thinking that I was not good enough. Right? So growing up, that nickname 
on that label that I put on myself because that's what I thought I am through my misinterpretation. I carried it throughout my growing up years. So in school, in order to cope with this trauma of feeling I'm not good enough, what did I do? I work hard. I succeed in my exams, I get leadership positions, CCA, I achieve successes. All the way, all throughout school, I try my best to get scholarship and leader position. Why? To feel better about myself. Right? And I keep thinking that by achieving, by getting success, I will be good enough. Because apparently, if I don't get that, my dad doesn't think I'm good enough, I get king. So I want to prove my worth to him, I want to prove myself to him, and I prove myself to myself even. Right? So I achieve. And not only did I start to bring this into my teenage years, I carried it into my adult years. Right. So even as a seminarian in the last eight years, right, I realized I put a lot of emphasis on achievements too. I took a lot of pride in my first two years where I wake up as early as Bishop, you know, spend one hour in the chapel, <laughs> one hour, the hour, you know, or I can pray, you know, and, and I'll be so proud of myself. But yeah, I, I worth something because I can do all this, you know, I can you know, spend time you know, in prayer. And even in ministry work, I always search for affirmation, right? Post on social media, what, how many likes are? Oh, very good. Very good right? so, well, not many likes are. Oh, maybe I'm not good enough. No. So I struggle with all this, depending on my external achievements and successes, but my self worth. Because deep down inside, as a child, I never thought that I was good enough. And I brought that name all through to my adulthood. Right? And that created a lot of um, um, self doubt, self, low self esteem, and all that. And that not only did that affect how I uh, acted in terms of chasing all this, whenever I share an idea to people and uh, they don't like my idea or they think that well, what kind of idea is this, right? I get very angry, I get very frustrated, I get very hurt. Because to me, they are not only rejecting my idea, they are rejecting me. Because my worth was dependent on whether people approve of that idea or achievement. And people reject that, they are also rejecting my self-worth. So I, I used to get very emotional, very angry, very upset, and I didn't know why. And I thought like maybe that person don't like me, or maybe, you know, and I get very angry and upset. Right? So this is the false self. This is the, the self that took on a, 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 a new role, or what I would like to call a public role. Right, that, that the false self now takes on this label that I'm not good enough and I need to achieve to be good enough. Right? So throughout my, adult, throughout my years of growing up, I lived in that false self and I was never happy. Right? Because as a result of that, I hated myself actually. Right? In external, I tried to prove, oh, okay, very good. But deep down, I didn't like myself. I still thought, why well, you very lousy? Why can't you do better? Why can't you get better results? Why that person can do better than you? It's all that self-talk, all that you know, self-doubt. So, in my therapy, right, uh, there was one incident where uh, she was just asking me to go back to my childhood right, and just talk about my childhood. Then I share, share, share and came to the comic thing. Yeah. So I share about my dad, da da da. But the minute I share more and more, right? I finish sharing, wonderful. And I just cry and cry and cry. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what's happening? Why? And I thought I share this quite often already, right? And I always did, but for some reason, but the, the emotions kept coming. I quit crying, crying, crying. I didn't know why. So the therapist said, okay, okay, stay in that moment. Just close your eyes, stay in that memory, and listen to what your body is saying. So I listened, kept quiet, and for the first time in my life, I heard this voice inside of me. It came up and said, you don't trust me. For the first time, my inner child, or my true self, who was hurt all this while, could finally tell me, or want to say to my dad, you don't trust me. Right? And that was really the real self that was buried all these years. Right? This, this true self that wanted to be loved, wanted to be trusted, wanted to feel like I'm good enough. But because I interpreted wrongly, 
I told that Indian child, you shut up, you are not good enough to go and hide somewhere, right? Daddy don't trust you, the world doesn't think you're good enough, you just hide somewhere, right? But finally, for the first time, I heard what he was trying to tell me. He was trying to tell me, hey, I want to be accepted, I want to be trusted, I want to be loved. You know, what's going on? Right? And, and I think over time, as once I could listen to the inner child, I realized how hard I was to him. And that he was actually just hurting so much all these years. Buried in my cave that I call it. And, and so looking back at how I behave, right, this false self outgrew the, the, the true self. So if you know, I mean, so how I would say is that the inner child or the true self, right, who was born perfect, you know, in the image and likeness of God, beautiful, perfect, right, because of the trauma from my dad, my environment, right, I start to change his name from good to not good enough. And I push him down, and a false self grew up instead. A false self who thinks that I need to achieve, I need to successful, I need to earn myself work. So from the, the true self that got hidden, the false self came up, and I kept living by that false self. You know, expecting achievements, expecting affirmation. But that, but that not only harmed my inner child, it harmed the way I was living my life, getting angry at people, feeling like I'm not good enough. That kind of thing. So what the therapist was trying to help me do is, now we need to awaken the inner child. Because for so long, it's been hurt and wounded and not, no one paid attention to it. But I think in that, in that therapy session where I could finally cry it out, right? I was paying attention to what the inner child was trying to tell me. Right? And I, I, I quieted down, I gave him space, and finally my inner child says, I, didn't, I don't feel trusted. I don't feel like anyone cares for me. But I want to be cared for. I want to be loved. I want to be accepted for who I am. And so the therapist helped me train my mind down to start telling myself, you are enough, or rather, I am enough. I want the therapist help me bring out the true self, and for me to start living based on the true identity of my inner, inner child. Right? To start believing that I'm enough as who I am. I don't need to achieve, I don't need people to approve of me. They may disagree, they may not like me, they may say bad things about me, but who cares? Right? I'm enough. And I want to start to love myself for who I am. I want to be able to be contented with who I am and actually allow the inner self or the true self to come out much more. Right? So there was one incident in Sydney. Uh, one week before I, I discovered this, I realized I was having dinner with a priest, a priest friend, right, and a few Singaporeans in Sydney. We were having a dinner. Then after the, din after the dinner, the, the priest decided to pay for the meal. So don't worry, I'll cover this. He said that. In my heart, right, my false self what, reacted. They told my told, told me, they make you very stingy, you know, you can't even pay for others. See this priest so generous. Look at you, right? <laughs> well, and you know, so I was more aware of the inner voice in my head. The false self was speaking out saying, Yeah, so lousy, look at you, you know. Such to compare me with the priest and that kind of thing. And I felt so lousy, I shrunk. I, I didn't want, I, I just withdrew from the conversation. I felt so lousy, I could sense myself just being so small. So when I told this to my therapist, she said, yeah, this is exactly what's happening. If you, if you live by a false self, you allow all these criticisms to keep coming at you, right? You will react based on that false self. Right? So she taught me, why don't you start noticing whenever your false self comes up and says something, you tell her, no, this is not what you should be saying to me. Quiet down, and then you call out the true self and says, okay, I'm enough, I can do this, right? So what happened the next week, I don't know why also we happened to have another gathering, right? The same priest came, <laughs> came uh, a different group. So we had dinner, dinner a whole cooked meal, so no pay. <laughs> <laughs> but he started a conversational topic that I didn't know much about. And he talked, and the other friends talked, talked, talk. Then I could sense my false self telling me, ah, see, you again lousy. I can't even join in the conversation. Oh, he's so knowledgeable, he can talk, 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 talk. Oh, then I caught him. 
And I said, no, that's not what I want to believe about you. So I said, thank you very much.